Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in St. Simons Beach, Georgia on this beautiful warm and sunny winter morning. It is now <coughs> Monday morning, January 22nd, 2018. So it's time for me to dive into what has become my three-part <coughs> economic uh, meltdown roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the the finance pages and the regular pages of the mainstream media news to see how the global industrial economy otherwise known as the new world order is bringing out all the stops to bring down a planet here on this beautiful Monday January 22nd 2018 so many versions of this story. I do this story every year. This is the latest update where they figure out, they crunch all the numbers and figure out how many individual humans own <coughs> as much wealth as the lowest half of the planet. So they're saying on, on one side of the scale, they're calling it 3.7 billion, roughly. 3.7 billion people uh, on, on the lower half of the planet. How many people this year, we're talking individual billionaires, uh, own as much wealth as the bottom 3.7 billion? If your answer was 42 billionaires hold as much wealth as the world's poorest 3.7 billion give yourself a gold star <clears throat> several versions of this story obviously the world's richest one percent raked in 82 percent of all of the wealth created on the planet last year according to a new report by poverty fighting nonprofit Oxfam. <clears throat> Just 42 people now hold as much wealth as the poorest 3.7 billion people in the world. In the U.S., the country's three richest people, the country's three richest people have the same wealth as the poorest half of the American population. So what is that? About 170 million people on one side, three on the other side, which I'm, who would that be? It would be Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Bezos. Oh, who would, the, maybe it tells later in the story. I, I know Bill and Jeff are two of the three. Uh, the world saw the biggest increase in billionaires in history. There you go. With a new billionaire added every two days, the world now has 2,043 billionaires, and nine of every ten of them are men. Billionaire wealth has risen by an annual average of 13% since 2010, while the average worker's wage has risen an average of 2%. While billionaire income was booming last year, the poorest half of the world saw zero increase in their wealth. Yep, yep, yep. They released this, uh, they, they always do this, uh, they released this report the day before the start of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, which Donald Trump uh, plans to attend. The Oxfam report specifically criticizes Donald Trump for creating a cabinet of billionaires and for pushing for huge tax cuts for the richest 1%. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, Credit Suisse Global Wealth blamed the wealth gap on tax evasion, 
corporations increasing influence on government policy. No shit, Sherlock. Erosion of workers' rights and cost cutting. Uh, this is Winnie Biana, Oxham Executive Director. Quote, the billionaire boom is not a sign of a thriving economy, but a symptom of a failing economic system. The people who make our clothes, assemble our phones, and grow our food are being exploited to ensure a steady supply of cheap goods and swell the profits of corporations and billionaire investors. That was HuffPost coverage. <coughs> Time Magazine weighing in on the same story. 82% of the wealth generated last year went to the richest 1% of the global <coughs> population. Uh, as global political and business leaders gather for this week's World Economic Forum in Davos. The report highlights a global system that rewards the super-rich and neglects the poor. Quoting this woman, Winnie, again, the few at the top get richer and richer and the millions at the bottom while well, the billions at the bottom are trapped in poverty wages. Will they say who the three? <coughs> oh, of course. Warren Buffett is the third. Uh, so the five, so it's here in this country is Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Jeff Bezos. But Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg is breathing down their necks. And then we have one guy, I think, is he from Mexico, Amancio Ortega, as the five richest people on the planet. Four are complete Anglo white men, and one is sort of one of these semi Anglo Hispanics. <clears throat> so, of course, what also today is, is the third day of the government shutdown. Can't you really tell? I'm sure you're suffering from the fact that the uh, federal government has shut down. And how is the stock market suffering because of this? Stocks shrug off U.S. government Shut down. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Yes. <clears throat> World stocks and U.S. bond markets on Monday shrugged off a government shutdown in Washington. And U.S. Treasury real yields, which tend to fall during government shutdowns, rose this morning as investors saw limited economic fallout from the, fuzz, from the political standoff and focused instead on a global economy motoring ahead. So what does Goldman Sachs have to say about the government shutdown? Goldman Sachs the government shutdown will take a toll on the U.S. economy, Bullshit detected. Take precautions. but the pain will not last long. No shit, Sherlock. La -da -da -da. So, uh, anybody, uh, confused about this story about all these billionaires getting richer and how corporations, one of the main reasons that these these 42 people 
own half this world's wealth is because the just the is, is it growing still or has it just completely become the norm that the world's governments, the politicians completely in the pockets of these globalist billionaires such as Donald Trump. Uh, the circle closes. So what were the Koch brothers and Paul Ryan up to while all of this uh, information was coming out? Paul Ryan collected $500,000 in Koch brother contributions days after Congress passed tax law. No shit, Sherlock. Just days after the uh, House passed its version of the federal tax law slashing corporate tax rates, House Speaker Paul Ryan collected nearly $500,000 in campaign contributions from billionaire energy mogul Charles Koch and his wife. I don't know where uh, that other, uh, when, how much he collected from the other Koch brother. Koch and his brother David spent millions of dollars to get the new tax law passed and are spending millions more in a public relations campaign in an attempt to boost support for the law, the Wall Street Journal reported. Coke Industries, one of the largest private corporations in the nation, operates oil refineries and man manufactures a variety of products. Yes, I bet. The new tax law uh, slices corporate tax rates from 35% to 21% and includes a special deduction for oil and gas investors. The new law is expected to save the Koch brothers and their businesses billions of dollars in taxes. There you go. Uh, wonder how the rich just keep on getting richer while the planet goes up in a ball of flame. Let's get back to Goldman Sachs <clears throat> uh, after shrugging off the government shutdown. What Goldman Sachs is telling its millionaire clients about the stock market. Goldman Sachs private wealth management advisors are telling their wealthiest clients that U.S. stocks are not in a bubble and that the bull market will likely continue. The question is, continue for how long? Well, I guess ultimately it will continue until it slams into the limits of growth. But drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. Let's see. Here are three energy stocks that are, you know, again, uh, how many times every Monday morning I give you my ham bone stock tips of the day to how to, how to make money off the collapse of a planet. Wow. How about three energy stocks to add to your portfolio here in 2018? Good old Halliburton, Pioneer Natural Resources, and whoever work day, work day is. Uh, who is uh, work day? Uh, I don't even know who the hell they are. Uh, we all know who Halliburton is, and I love these, uh, all of these planet eaters calling themselves, they, they'll put a name like Pioneer, and then they will put natural resources 
after it. So you're just led to jump to the uh, conclusion that they're somehow conserving natural resources. No, what they're doing is they're raping and pillaging the planet of the planet's natural resources. Okay, and then buried away on the business space. These are the kind of stories where the collapse of a planet hide like the little cockroaches that they are. ONGC shares rise on deal to buy majority stake in HPCL. This is Planet Eater gobbledygook for we are so fucked. This is out of India, Dateline, Mumbai, India from Reuters News. Shares of Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited jumped as much as 6.3%. This, this morning, on Monday, after the fossil fuel explorer said it would buy a majority stake in Indian refiner Hindustan P Petroleum Corporation. There you go. And uh, you can uh, you can just multiply this story times 500 percent. I'll be coming back in part two with uh, where I should have put that story with the fossil fuel, the big oil and big gas roundup for the week. Uh, but we got two more here on, on part one of this rant. What is EPA Chief, Environmental Protection Agency Chief, Scott Pruitt, what is on his mind uh, this week? EPA Chief Scott Pruitt says industry is a necessary partner in the Environmental Protection Agency. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Scott Pruitt told CBS News that a partnership with industry is necessary in order for his agency to protect the environment. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. <clears throat> this paradigm that says we have to choose industry over the environment or the environment over industry is the old way of thinking. That now, that serves political ends, but it does not serve the environment because I will tell you this, to achieve what we want to achieve in environmental protection and environmental stewardship, you know, under Donald Trump, we need the partnership of industry. Uh, Pruitt, who has been accused by his critics of being too cozy with special interest groups and executives and advocates of the fossil fuel industry, defended these relationships as necessary for environmental stewardship. Uh, anyway, enough of that, that idiot. But what is going on with our buddies at Amazon.com? How is Uncle Jeff uh, celebrating? Uh, not only is he celebrating the new Oxfam report that he and 41 of his buddies own as much of this planet as, uh, as 3.7 billion people, he is also celebrating putting how many more uh, thousands of his own employees out of work. It has finally happened. Amazon's automated grocery store will launch today after a year of false starts. <clears throat> after nearly a year's delay, Amazon Go 
is finally opening to the public on Monday morning. Amazon's first automated grocery store promises no lines, no checkouts, no registers, and which is a, three ways of saying no paid employees. And it could be a game changer for both the grocery and retail industry. No shit, Sherlock. As it will raise questions of job creation and destruction by the e-commerce giant and it will test whether consumers will warm to an omnichannel technologically advanced retail experience. There you go. Uh, Amazon calls it new technology just walk out. There you go. For customers, it's simple. Scan your Amazon Go app on your smartphone as you walk into the store, pick up whatever you want, and simply walk out. And you do not have to be bothered by one of those pesky paid human employees as the little uh, AI uh, robots taking care of all of your clueless moron consumer and lifestyle choices here in 2018 as the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and the planet takes a nosedive in into a pool of oil and we will come back with part two of this rant uh, looking at the oil and gas industry in early 2018 in just a minute for part one of this rant. Smoke them if you got them. We are so fucked. I'm afraid I might have left my sign in uh, Cedar Key, but I think you know, sign or no sign, that we're all fucked. Be right back at you. Bye, guys.